In January 1948, in the dark hours of the Soviet Union, a child was born in Stalino, who was destined to symbolize mighty struggles. A bitter, global struggle between the bald eagle and the brown bear in the throes of their Cold War. A lopsided struggle between terrifying tyranny and human rights between brutally enforced atheism and the free soul of a believer, between monstrous anti-Semitism and a proud Jew, and between the temptation to collapse and the superhuman will to survive. Nathan Sharensky graduated from Moscow's Physical Technical Institute before joining the underground human rights movement, reclaiming his Jewish heritage and emerging as a foremost dissident and spokesman for human rights. In 1973, Nathan took the calculated risk of applying for an exit visa to Israel. He was denied and rose to the forefront of Jewish refusenik activities. Well, I was in the middle of the struggle when the uh, situation looked very dangerous, when some of my friends in Helsinki group were already arrested when new wave of repressions against Jewish activists was clearly prepared. And at this time, I received a note from my wife, Avital, through some American Jewish tourists. And together with this note, a small psalm book. And Avital writes that this psalm book was with me in the last year when I was trying to help you in different places in the world. And I have a feeling that the time has come to send it to you. And I open the book and I can't read there anything because I never learned how to read these texts. And also uh, most of the words I don't know. Many of the words I know about 1,000 words, mainly of the, my, our daily struggle, prison, uh, repres uh, rep uh, repressions, demonstrations, uh, but not these words. So I decided I don't have time for these small things when I'm very busy now in organizing demonstrations and press conferences and put and almost forgot. In 1977, he was arrested on false charges of spying for the United States. But prior to the announcement of his verdict, he famously declared, to the court, I have nothing to say. To my wife and the Jewish people, I say, next year in Jerusalem sentenced to 13 years imprisonment. He spent the next 16 months, some 1,600 miles away from Jerusalem, in Moscow's Lafortovo prison, often in solitary confinement and in a special torture cell, before being transferred to a Siberian labor camp. They bring me the list of things that they confiscated, and there is mentioned this uh, small black book, not in Russian, and I understand that they are talking about this psalm book, which was sent to Vital, by Vital. And then I remember this note, which was sent. And I demand that they'll give it to me. And it was a long struggle. Three years after I was arrested, they returned this book to me, together with the telegram from my mother that my father passed away. And it's, of course, it's difficult when, uh, it's always difficult, but when you cannot be with your family. And they decided that the only thing which I can do, I will be reading this psalm book until I understand. And so I'm reading these hundreds of thousands of words where I cannot understand where the sentence begins and ends, and can't understand more than half of the words. And then simply comparing between different places of these words, I try to find out the connection between them. And it so happened that the first phrase from all these hundreds of thousands of words, a short phrase of 13 very short words, which I understood fully. The that is the phrase, Gam ki alech bagei tzalamavet lo ira ra keta imadi. It's from the psalm uh, Kav Gimel, uh, and when you'll go through the valley of shadow of death, you'll fear no evil because you are with me. And that was very powerful. It was very important for me. And each time they were taken from me, I was fighting and on hunger strikes, uh, refusing to work, 
sometimes refusing to eat until they'll bring it to me back. He resisted and persisted with remarkable courage. His miracle dawned in 1986 when he was released in a prisoner exchange. Leading Israeli officials, including Prime Minister Shimon Peres, welcomed him to Jerusalem. And even when they already took me from prison and replaced all my clothes, I was lying in the snow refusing to enter the airplane without getting this book back because I felt that all my strength is there. So that was the only piece of property which uh, I took from prison. And all these years, it's always with me, and it gives me a lot of strength. The Hebrew phrases in Sharansky's Petit Black Book were authored 28 centuries earlier by King David, who reigned from the splendid city of which Sharansky dreamed, Jerusalem. It was he who crafted the powerful line of prophetic poetry that lent indestructible hope and undefeatable strength to endless generations of Jews in distress. Even if I must tread through a valley forged by death's own shadow, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. A fountain of eternal confidence generated on behalf of each Jew in every century in the face of the mightiest and most monstrous obstacles. You are not alone. God is with you. Walk with confidence. The creator of the universe stands guard at your side. <laughs>